Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics, where this video we're going to do, uh, it's going to be about the Nomad here, and uh, kind of a strange story, uh, I had a sponsor that not only gave me the free product, which is a dash cam, but they were going to pay me, but they wanted to review it first. So I did the video and uh, they, you know, they had all these uh, terms in there. Well, anyway, they wanted uh, like th at least three minutes of a dash cam uh, telling them, telling you guys about it and stuff like that. Well, I gave them about 30 minutes because I showed all kinds of stuff, putting it in and uh, the, the dash cam footage and all that. And, well, th this video isn't just about the dash cam. We're going to go over the uh, misfiring uh, problem, which was the last video on this Nomad. And I just had a whole bunch of questions and advice and stuff like that. So we're going to go over all them, all them comments. And it might be a little bit boring, but if you're into, into that, it, it'll be okay. Um, so anyway, I sent them the video, and, uh, they wanted to nitpick it all to death. They wanted me to put in, uh, voiceovers, text on top, delete this footage, delete that, add this. And I thought about it for a while, and I said, you know what, no. I said, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I says, uh, you know, w when you make a video on uh, video using a camera or, or whatever, it's, it's what it is, it's a whole bunch of clips. You know, whenever I say, uh, I'll be back, you know, well, that's one clip. And then the next clip, and what you do is you add all them together and makes one video. Well, it's it's very time consuming to take those little clips and rip them apart and take this out of the front and this out of the middle and add the text and do the voiceover. I don't even know how to do voiceovers, guys. I get, I've done text before. Uh, so it was going to be a lot of, a lot of problem, uh, time consuming problems. So I just says, you know, you no, I said there's nothing bad about the dash cam. I, I like it. Uh, so they says, well, well, we don't want you to air the the video at all. <laughs> so I said, well, okay, you'll lose out on a bunch of sales. So anyway, guys, uh, I just deleted those clip parts of when I was you know unboxing it. Uh, showing showing it and all that stuff now uh, I think some of their complaints was the back window was too dirty and it wasn't getting great footage uh, you know just a whole bunch of nitpicking stuff and I thought you know what they're just trying to get out of out of paying me the money and and I told them I said well just forget about the money I, I don't care about it and then they said well we, we don't even want you to air the air the video you can uh, keep the cam okay guys so <laughs> so anyway I deleted the clips of unboxing it and all that stuff and I X'd out the name when when you show the uh, the video footage from the dash cam uh, it has their name on it and I just put a bunch of X's over it so anyway this video is going to be about a uh, you know, part of the dash cam at the end, it's going to be a bunch of uh, footage, the drive, basically a test drive. So I used the dash cam footage instead of my regular camera to uh, to show the test drive and, and all that stuff. So I X'd out the name of it on it. So anyway, I just wanted to air, air that. Uh, I like the dash cam. I think it's cool. We're going to be used, you know, if I take this on another hot rod power tour and stuff we're going to be using plenty of the dash cam footage for the driving it's a lot better than trying to hold the camera up out the windshield uh it's better than putting a 
I think I put one on here. This little deal here to hold the camera because the, the hood scoop's too high. So it gets a bunch of the hood scoop in there. So anyway, yeah, I've, I finished the video. There's the dash cam right there. And I don't think it shows the name of it on it uh, in the footage. And uh, But I like it. I like the, the rear cam, the front cam. I like the footage of it, but I think they're a little picky because the back window was a little dirty. Sun glare, you know, on some shots. Well, it can't help it, you know, it's sunny as hell where I live. <laughs> Texas, Oklahoma border here, it's uh, pretty sunny all the time and it's going to get some sun glare. So. so anyway, guys, I don't want to ramble too much, but that's what this video will be about. Uh, I'm going to insert another sponsor. Uh, you know, just a few minutes there clip of another sponsor to give me something so stay tuned for that and uh, it's been a while since we made a video on this we're just trying to trying to figure out what that misfire is so let me all <laughs> give me more comments but don't don't repeat the comments that I've already gone over in this video okay so uh, I'll be back at the end Okay guys, wash her all up. You can hear how it runs. Sounds great. Just got that miss in it, which we'll go over later. You can hear it on this side. But anyway, washed her all up. Uh, she's looking good. Yeah, see this side doesn't, you can't hear it on that. That's why it's coming up from the driver's side. Well, okay guys, let me uh, hook up the dash cam, see what I want to put it. And I, I went ahead and used one of these solar powered battery deals there. They didn't work on a few cars, uh, mainly because the batteries are probably dead, but I knew this one was good. It, it would go dead after I don't know, a few months, but it would charge up, and anyway, I put it on here, and it started up, so it's been a month or two since I started it, anyway, okay, let me get started with the dash cam, okay guys, I got it in there, it's pretty simple actually, okay, <sighs> Mounted it to the windshield right here, right below the rear view mirror. Okay, it's on right now. Uh, I haven't routed all the power cords. Uh, it's kind of dark. I'm going to show you here tomorrow when it's light out. Okay, this is so it's just got the power cord right there, and then the rear view camera right there. And I haven't got that tucked up underneath anything yet. It's going. <laughs> Let me just show you what I got. Uh, I had to find a, that's it there. I had to find a little bracket because it's supposed to stick right on the back window. But of course, this window is in the tailgate, which folds down, and you can't have it. No back window rolls down, so you get to mount it on the roof somehow. Uh, so I found this little bracket here two-way tape it to there and you can adjust this the camera okay and then I there, there's a headliner backing in here it's from a Jeep <laughs> but I put a big screw in there and it seems to be it, it's not the best I, I could always two-way tape it or something there I'm just gonna see how it goes I'm gonna see if this vibrates or anything that that's it's got to be mounted to the roof somehow right in that that area it can't be in the way the window goes right here so it can't it can't mount to this frame here uh so anyway this light <clears throat> this light here that i got kind of blocks the when i turn the camera on it they don't like it so Let's just kind of point the light there. We'll go in here and switch it to the rear view. Okay. 
So there's four buttons underneath here. This will be for taking a picture, emergency recording, and then the menu. So this one will go to the rear camera. It'll, it'll tell you too. Switch to rear recording. Okay, so there's the rear. Looks pretty good. Switch to front recording. That's pretty cool. Okay. I'm going to come back and show you this in the daytime. And then we're going to... Maybe I should take it for a drive right now. Well, let's see what it looks like with the window up. Okay, let's, let's do the window up here. Okay, there's the tailgate up. Uh, I thought I wiped this window down. Let me grab a... I had a paper towel. Grab a clean paper towel here. It's all wet from washing it. And the back window's tinted, so we want to see what it looks like. Ah, shit, I got that sticker right in the way, don't I? <laughs> oh, shit. May have to take that sticker off. Okay. going to be right in the way. Okay. That's with the window up. Okay, let's switch the camera. Switch to rear recording. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah. It's blocking the view. The YouTube part of it is. Okay, well, we peel that sticker off and uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I scraped the Clunkers and Classics sticker off there. So, yeah, she looks clear now. Uh, okay. Well, let me drive it around here since it's dark and we'll get that footage and then we'll uh, get some daytime footage here tomorrow when it's light out. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got a product to show you. A sponsor sent me uh, some shoes. Everybody needs shoes, right? Uh, okay, I ordered these ones in black. They got all different uh, colors and designs this isn't the only design they have these are i guess classic that's just what i picked out i don't like all them fancy ones with lights flashing and all that okay waterproof and breathable so they're waterproof okay it comes in a a carrying case i guess slide this out like that and here they are uh, they're supposed to be, you know, like very high quality. Uh, not exactly sure what that is. Okay, got a little different design on a uh, instead of shoelaces or Velcro for these deals here. Anyway, um, Yeah, what can I say? They're shoes. Uh, let me let me put them on. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys, they slip on. They're stretchable, so they slip on like slippers. And then you just uh, pull this up and push that push that deal down. Probably going to use two hands. Hang on a second. Okay. Yeah, just pull that up, push that down. 
and then when you want to release it just push that like that pretty pretty simple really okay since they're uh and that little deal in the roll with some socks so <laughs> they give you a pair of socks so yeah they're they're very stretchable and uh they're supposed to last a long time so might be a lot better than buying what I've been buying was Walmart type sneakers and since it's the rainy season and everything it's wet I think I'm gonna leave these on they're supposed to be waterproof and everything so yeah pretty cool I'll put a link in the description very lightweight too very lightweight can barely feel that you got shoes on uh, yeah nice okay we'll check them out in the description guys okay guys here's my uh obd2 port and i'm going to uh, plug in my code reader it does work Just wait a minute here, see what it says. We so can read it. Okay, PO122 throttle pedal position sensor and circuit low input. We figure out. Number two, same thing and PO300 random misfire. Okay, so that, that's the code. That's the only code it reads. Okay, so, yeah, I didn't know before whether, whether it uh, worked or not, I, I couldn't remember. But when this engine was in the truck, 2001 Silverado, uh, it read that code I believe but anyway as I mentioned in the uh, past video which we'll look at here in a minute uh, I changed the throttle position sensor and the uh, idle control thing bottom off eBay and uh, the idle would be kind of high at some point, low at some point, and it seemed to make the miss worse. And I had that on there for a while, and I, I took them off, like after last video, and put the old stuff back on. So, uh, I don't think that's the miss. Change a computer over. This computer that's in here, I got it off eBay. It was a used one that they programmed specifically for me, what I told them, uh, you know, to turn the O2 sensors off and all that stuff. Uh, put the other one in, it didn't make much of a difference. Although I think I put the computer and the deals on there at the same time. So it could have been one or the other. Uh, put the, New fuel injectors on this side, new coils, new spark plugs, new wires. I think new wires. But I tested each one, okay? Took off the spark plug wire with a spark plug on it, cranking it over, it got spark. Put it back into the next one, spark. So it's getting spark on all four of these on this bank here. So that's where the miss is coming from. Okay. So it's getting sparked. So there was a lot of comments. We'll go over it. I got my uh, tablet here. We'll go over it. But it's not any of them, okay? It's not It's not any of what I just mentioned. So let, let me get my tablet to the video and, and we'll, we'll go over it over the comments. Okay, guys, here's, uh, here's the video. Ah, shit. 
So I put the comments over here. Um, Compression test to the Nomad here. Okay. It's got 105 comments, but we'll go over them. Narrow it down what cylinder is misfiring. Oh, temp yeah, I, I tried the temperature gun on the... Uh, it. I got the infrared or the red dot and I went on the headers on each cylinder and they just kind of they're not all equal but it's the same on the other side so I don't know if it's a LS where some run hotter than the other but I, I did that a million times so it's not that that's what he has here This guy's had a little vacuum elbows. Yeah, well, I I I uh, did replace. I think I replaced, unless that was in my truck, one of these little elbows. But no, no nothing's leaking that I can tell. This guy could be one of plugs, wires, coil, injector. See if you see any spark jumping. No, it, it's not that. Like I said, it, it's getting it's getting spark to each one. So all that stuff is good. Two wires were crossed in the harness. Temp gun. Spring connects to the coil. Yeah, the OBD2 port is working. So... Scan tool, yeah, somebody had says uh, scan tool that reads live data that would tell you what cylinder is misfiring. At least you would have a starting point. Well, yeah, my scan tool just says misfire. But I know it's on this bank here because you can hear it from the side pipes. I don't have a cross, cross flow pipe there it's just this bank is that side and this bank is that side so you can hear the mess it's on this side so yeah uh, injector not spraying correctly like I said I got new injectors one of the coils no new coils scanner that shows live data Fuel spark sensors or something else. Yeah. And somebody had says, uh, yeah, this move injectors from side to side. No, we, we don't need to do all that. That's. Yeah, this guy. Plenty of comments telling you to try things you've already done. Yeah. Uh, had an oval piston and a bent. Ah, shit. Bent connecting rod. Uh, remove Schrader and compression gauge. Yeah, I didn't. Well, I can't remember what happened on the. I think it's getting compression on all of it, wasn't it? Or did I? Yeah, I did a compression test. Collapse lifters, bent push rod, not allowing the valves. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not going to uh, tear down this motor. Now I'm going to take off the intake and valve covers and heads if it's a, a bent valve or something. And I'm going to tear down half the engine to find an internal part that, you know, might be a valve or something. If I'm going to go that far, it's coming out. Uh, so that's the thing. If it is something internal like that, then uh, I'm just going to leave it in here and drive it till it, you know, blows up or uh i come across another engine see this one only read 150,000 it's got 153,000 on it now and but then again you know somebody had mentioned a while back that the odometer might have been screwed up in uh in the truck and that might not be the accurate accu accurate mileage it may, it may not be i don't know but i just assumed it was so 
who knows so that's why I put it in here without really you know tearing it apart and doing this and that to it 150,000 miles on an LS motor is nothing it's nothing these things you know some youtuber was saying he had a suburban or something with 395,000 on it uh, yeah one to plug a wire at a time did that clean the throttle body yeah carb cleaner done all that Pull injectors, plugs, coils off, change them to the left side. I already did that. Uh, vacuum gauge on it. Uh, somebody uh, also mentioned, uh, uh, what was I going to say? They wanted to uh, put it on a better, com uh, they said no they said once you take these off they got to be programmed i don't know if they do or not these deals here have to be programmed with a special computer well that's that's not going to happen either i'm not taking it to a dealer and having having all that uh got a solution 350 small block chevy well well see the thing is guys well i i bought this engine because it was or use this engine from that truck because it was low mileage and just to do an LS swap but the main thing is it gets 20 miles to the gallon because it's fuel injected it's you know more modern fuel efficient and you know twice as much power as a as an old 350 so you can't beat it you got twice the power and twice the gas mileage so why would I want to put an old 350 in there that gets 10 miles to the gallon and half the horsepower? Uh, might be an injector. O2 sensors correctly. Now that they're off. Yeah, the the uh, computer, they, they took out the O2 sensors on that. So it doesn't have O2 sensors or catalytic converter. I think somebody said, you know, clog catalytic converter. Yeah, it ain't got no catalytic converters on it to clog up. Uh, dirty injectors, they're new. Uh, yeah, AC Delco coal packs, yeah, but like I said, I, I took each spark plug wire off and each one of them are, is getting spark. Mass o airflow sensor. Uh, I, th I think I did clean it. It should be this deal here, mass airflow. Yeah, I could try. I could try cleaning that, but pull injectors, check spray pattern. Yeah, the like I said, I think on this video I I didn't know whether the OBD port was working or not. But yeah, it's not going to uh, pinpoint which cylinder. It doesn't matter what cylinder it's. It's that side, uh, and I'm not tearing it down. If I was going to tear it down, yeah, I'd want to know what cylinder it is, or I don't know. Check injector resistance on all eight. Sounds like a bad injector, yeah. Collapse lifters, not opening the valves. It could be a bad lifter or bad valve. You know, that's, that's, I've tried everything else two or three times, so it has to be something internal. Inspect the plugs, yeah, they're new. Now, fuel regulators all cleaned out, new injectors in it. Exhaust valves, carbon up, need a good cleaning, possibly, but. Yeah, well, this is what I was thinking, but I think this engine's too old for those lifters that allow it to run on less cylinders, conserve fuel, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I think they're on the newer ones. I don't think this engine has it, but. Copax, minor leak and fuel injector, burnt valve. Yeah, 
Yeah, it must be a bad valve. Uh, ECM fuse, yeah, well, it's working. I don't even know if you guys can read all this, but... Uh, isolate the cylinder, unplug one coil at a time. Well, we already know. Wires are the yeah, the good wires. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to pull the valve covers. Carb cleaner, cam position sensor, crank position sensor. I don't know if it's any of them. Dirty injector. DOD lifters. Yeah, like I said, I could probably look it up. I, I think it's too old. It's a 2001 engine, so... Loose rocker, but... I don't think anything's loose. I think something's just stuck. Valve stuck or lifter stuck or something. Oil starved cam and lifters. No, it's getting plenty of oil. Gets oil changes and oil pressure and all that. So Spark plugs, correct gaps. No, I've already tried a couple sets of plugs. Cam sensor, burnt valve, broken spring. It could be a broken spring. Weak lifter. Well, like I said, guys, I just figured I'd go over. shuts down one bank at low speed till you give it the beans yeah like I said when uh, it, it's kind of funny but if you start off if you floor it starting off like you're gonna drag race it'll bog down a little bit uh, but once you after about one second or two seconds and it, it goes but you can really feel the power if you're you know you're stopping and you're gonna stop at a stoplight and you're about to turn or uh, you're, you're turning onto a road at low speed and you just kick it down into first gear like passing gear well passing gear would be second I guess but, but anyway you're just creeping five miles an hour turning a corner or something and you floor it it just flies just woo, just tons of power uh, but it's just starting starting off like you want to spin the tires. It won't spin the tires. But once you, after two seconds, it just, so it feels like all the cylinders are firing. Basically, that's what I mean. Uh, burnt valve, valve springs, bad cam and lifters. We're on a classic small block. I got plenty of classic small blocks. None, nothing against them, but like I says, like I said, I wanted to do, I wanted to do an LS swap, and I had the engine uh, wanted the overdrive transmission, so it's it's overdrive and uh, fuel injected, and kept all that together, and drove it 2,600 miles and hot rod power tour, and uh, got 20 miles to the gallon, so you can't beat it. Okay, so I just figured I'd go over all them questions, guys. Uh, like I said, uh, see, I, I messed with it at the time. See, I, I mentioned in the other video, you, you couldn't tell when this was in the truck, you couldn't tell because basically the exhaust goes into one single exhaust out the back of the truck. It was running. could It runs as smooth as this one idles. Uh, rev it up, had a loud exhaust on it. You couldn't hear no missing, really, and you really couldn't pinpoint it. Uh, so that's why I swapped it in there without checking anything but now since these exhaust is split you can hear it on this side and then you can feel it on your on your uh, acceleration right first couple seconds with the truck the rear end was was blown in it so I couldn't even drive the truck so that's basically why I just put it in here and I figured there were, if there was anything wrong, I was going to do a tune-up anyway. So I ended up doing, you know, new plugs and all that. And then once I 
could hear the little little miss and that's when I changed over all the coils and that and then drove it on hot rod power tour like that with the miss in it then when I got back then I changed the injectors and these deals here and see if that would make a difference and it didn't and then I made that last video on this of what I done to it and what it could be so anyway it has to be something internal it has to be a bad cam lobe bad lifter bad valve something who knows but I'm not tearing it down like I said I'll just drive it like this till you know if, if it gets worse then uh, we'll have to take it out uh, I'd like to drive it more and but like I said the uh, oil pan sits real low I made a guard on it a guard underneath of it so it's only a couple inches off the ground so that it'll hit that guard before the oil pan so I want to do that if I pull the engine out then I want to put a shallow oil pan on it but I think I'll just wait till I come across another junk truck or something with a good motor low mileage and use that engine and this engine tear it down later and put it in something else so I, I think that's it for the uh, trying to diagnose that miss okay I'll be back okay guys next day out in the Sun uh, routed all the wire to the rear camera all the way back there underneath the trim okay and I still got all these took the power wire just straight down here because I had some wires anyway from the uh, let me turn the from the GPS speedometer I think it flashes in the camera but it doesn't flash in uh, anyway, I got them wires and the fan wires going down here, so I kind of take them out of the way uh, Okay, so when I did the uh, Audio at night or the uh, camera at night it, it, there was no audio So I had to go through this uh, settings See that real good system settings anyway I went there I went there and turned on the volume went in there so well uh, I don't know if the Sun's gonna get that it had these little uh, plastic deals to put on the windshield to I guess deflect a glare or something but we'll see what happens Okay, well, I'm going to drive around the property, and I'll give you a shot of the uh, front and back, and hopefully the audio works. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, we're going for a cruise. Yeah, I put that little piece of elect electrostatic film in front of the camera to maybe keep off the glare uh, they said to that it'll have like air bubbles type thing in it you're supposed to get them out I tried my best so if there's any little things in the view that's probably like a little bubble looking thing that's what it is uh, just driving around the yard the uh, back window got completely filthy try to uh, get a rear camera view but it back window may be too dirty anyway we're just gonna go a couple of miles down the road here
Let me hear some wind noise. That camera is uh, talking. Not thinking it's a radio, but I got the radio off. I don't know what it's saying again here. I got the vent windows that are making wind noise. Okay, guys, well, that's the video, and uh, they uh, don't want to promote their dash cam on, on this, so there will be no links in the description or anything like that. So uh, that's, it's too bad, because uh, it was very reasonably priced, I believe, and I like it. Um, so anyway, that's the video, the test drive and all that, um, the sponsor uh these shoes here uh, i've been wearing them for about a week i like them very comfortable so check out the link in the description for them and uh check them out so anyway till next time uh like comment share subscribe 
and uh, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see y'all next time.